Hi there, me again. Welcome back to another video, and today I think I'm just going to start off by getting something off my chest that needs to be said. I'm an addict. A film camera addict. What did you think I was going to say? So today what we're going to do is we're going to go over my entire film camera collection that I've accumulated up to this point. So let's get started. So I think one of the most sensible places to start is with my first film cameras that I ever got. And this is one of them. This is the Yashica FR1. And the Yashica FR1 is a pretty cool camera. It was developed by Yashica, obviously, and it was based on the Contax RTS that you may have heard of. And the Contax RTS was also manufactured by Yashica because they had control over Contax's manufacturing at that point. So this camera was made from 1977 to 1981, and it has the Contax slash Yashica bayonet mount. So there are tons of lenses that you can get for this camera. Uh, this is one of the lenses that I think came with the camera when you bought it new, and it's a uh, Yashica lens, Yashinon, I believe, and it's a 50mm f1.9, but this lens is stuck at 1.9, so uh, you can only shoot it wide open. So I don't really plan on using this camera very much, but I also probably won't get rid of it because it belonged to my parents, and they took a lot of pictures of me as a kid on it, so... Probably just keep it in the collection, use it as a display piece. But, very interesting camera if you're looking to get started with film photography. Alrighty, second camera. Uh, this is another one that belonged to my parents, and I don't really use it, but I probably won't ever get rid of it. And this is the Canon TL. Uh, the Canon TL is not a very well-known camera, I don't think. Um, it was only made in 1968, I believe and it was the kind of base stripped down model of the Canon FTQL. So this camera doesn't have the one one thousandth of a second shutter speed and it doesn't have the self timer of the FTQL. This one is actually one of the rarer ones that had the quick load system. Um, and if you don't know what the quick load system is, I'll show you real quick. It's a little assist bracket basically that helps you load the film faster and it's a really good system, so if you're looking to start film photography and you want an old Canon camera, uh, these ones are a pretty good option because the quick load system is pretty nice to use. Also, this camera has TTL metering, so that's pretty nice as well. All right, third camera on the list, and this is actually the first camera I'm showing you today that I bought myself. So this is the Pentax SP1000. It's part of the Pentax Spotmatic line of cameras that was made from 1964 to 1976. So these cameras are cool because they have an M42 screw mount, so there's a lot of cheap lens options that you can go out and get. And they're really simple mechanical cameras, and you don't really have to worry about them too much. So this particular one has a shutter timing issue and needs to be CLA'd, um, but I'm probably not going to do that with this camera. Um, I did a whole video on it if you want to see everything about it, and you can check that out after this one. Alrighty, now we're getting into the good stuff. This is the Polaroid SX70, which is Polaroid's first instant camera, I believe, at least the first mass-marketed instant camera, um, and it's a really, really cool design. It's, if you don't know, it's an actual SLR as opposed to the later Polaroid cameras that just kind of have a viewing window off to the side. And it's got this really cool folding design. Check that out. Sick. All right, so undoing this is the part that's really kind of scary. It kind of feels like you're breaking the camera. No. Oh. Don't like doing that, really. Um, but this camera was made from 1972 to 1981. And some cool things about it. It's an actual SLR. Um, it has manual focus, unlike a lot of the later Polaroids, and it also has an exposure compensation dial, I guess, is what you would call it. It just kind of throws sort of an ND filter in front of this little uh, light sensor thing. 
Um, and it's, it's a really cool camera. And I plan on doing some videos with it in the future, um, but I haven't gotten out and shot with it quite yet. Alrighty, so second Polaroid on the list. And this is the Polaroid One Step Close-Up. And this is kind of an interesting departure from the SX-70. Um, much different design, but kind of a cool contrast to see them next to each other. And that's why I bought it. I literally just bought it to put it on a shelf. Um, but they are cool cameras. It's got a close-up lens that focuses as close as two feet. And yeah, I don't really plan on using this, but I did buy it for $2.50. So can't really complain about that. Alright, now let's get into point-and-shoots. This is actually the only point-and-shoot I have in my collection, and it's the Ricoh R1. Pretty cool camera. Um, it's a pretty simple point-and-shoot, not really luxury camera or anything like that. It's just kind of a normal consumer-grade camera. What is cool about it, though, is it has a panorama mask on the inside of the camera body, so you can shoot kind of fake panoramic images. Um, but yeah, the lens is pretty good, pretty sharp. I've shot with it and it makes good images. It's fun to take to parties and stuff. All right, now we're moving into the big boys, the medium format cameras. This is the Bronica S2A. This is my main medium format camera that I use and it's really, really cool. Um, it kind of looks like a really old toaster or something, um, but it's a 6x6 SLR camera and it has a flip up waist level viewfinder, um, but it does have, it's a whole system, it's a system camera, interchangeable backs, interchangeable viewfinders, interchangeable lenses, and it's kind of a cheap alternative to a Hasselblad 500CM, so if you are looking to get a Hasselblad but don't have the money, this is a great option. But I have done some videos with this already, and if you want to see those, you can watch them after this video. And I plan to do a lot more work with this camera, so look forward to that. All right, second medium format camera on the list, and this is the Yashica Mat 124. The Yashica Mat is a little bit different than the Bronica in that it's a TLR. TLR stands for Twin Lens Reflex, so when you open the viewfinder, you're actually looking through this top lens, and you're taking the image with the bottom lens. This camera is really, really beautiful, arguably probably the most beautiful camera in my collection. Um, all the chrome accents and everything just look really nice, and this camera is actually really, really nice to use. I only bought it because I got a really good deal on it. I bought it for like 120 bucks or something like that, and it's just, it was a joy to use when I tried it out. So I plan on making a lot more videos with this camera, and traveling with it when I want to travel light, but still shoot medium format. You may know this camera's successor that was a little bit more popular, or is now, that's the Yashica Mat 124G. Kind of looks the same, except it's all black. Personally, I think this one looks a little bit better, and they function pretty much the same. But you can get these for a little bit cheaper than the G models. And if you're looking at Roloflexes, this is definitely a cheaper way to go, and a great alternative. All right, if you've watched my videos for any lengthy amount of time, you've probably seen this camera over here on the shelf, and I think it's time we talk about it a little bit. This, fitting that we talk about this after the Yashica Mat 124, this is the Yashica Minister D. Now, this is the fourth, I believe, model in a line of Yashica rangefinder cameras, and it's honestly really, really nice looking and pretty fun to use. So this camera was made only in 1964, I believe, and it's pretty cool. They're really, really readily available. So if you want to buy one of these and get started with a rangefinder, this is a really good camera to start with. And it's got an internal light meter, and it also has a leaf shutter, which means you can sync flash at any shutter speed. The only thing I don't really like about it, which is kind of quirky, is the aperture and shutter speed are on this dial that are connected, so you kind of have to turn both and go back and forth until you get the right combination of settings that you're looking for, which is kind of slow, kind of fiddly, but it's a really fun camera to use. All right, time to show you my main camera, and that is the Canon P. Canon P is a rangefinder that was made from 1958 to 1961, 
This is easily my most used film camera. I take this with me literally everywhere I go. There's countless videos on my YouTube channel with me using it and talking about it, so you can check out that and see more than you need to know about this camera. But I'll give you the quick and short version of it here, and that's basically this camera is a stripped down rangefinder camera that has frame lines for 35, 50, and 100 millimeter lenses. It's got an LTM thread mount, and it's got a max shutter speed of 1 1,000th of a second, no light meter, and it's basically a Leica M2 competitor. So um, if you're looking at Leicas, maybe you're thinking about a Leica M2, this is a great alternative to go for. I also recommend the Nikon S rangefinders, the S2, the SP, cameras like that. Um, but this camera's great. It's awesome, and I love it. It needs to be serviced, but it's definitely still usable. All right, this camera looks like a rangefinder, but it's not. Um, this is my newest pickup, and I'm really excited to try it out. This is the Nikonos 3. The Nikonos 3 is the third in a long line of underwater cameras made by Nikon, and these cameras, I believe, were made from 1963 all the way to 2001. So this is an underwater scale focus camera. There's a little viewing window in the side like rangefinder cameras, but there's no actual rangefinder focusing patch. Um, it's a really interesting design though. It's got O-rings around the body and around the lens so that you don't get water inside your camera while you're shooting, but you control the aperture and focus on these dials on the side of the lens. It's got interchangeable lenses with a mount that is unique to this camera system, the Nikonos mount. And the shutter mechanism is really cool. You actually advance the film by pressing the shutter button forward, and then it locks in place, and then you take the picture by pressing it again. So it's a really cool, interesting camera, and I can't wait to use it in the water and maybe take pictures of surfers and stuff. It's also really quiet, so I might use it for street photography, but I guess we'll see. All right, well, that's it for my entire camera collection. Um, I am a hoarder, I think it's safe to say and I need to slim my collection down a little bit, so I'm probably gonna be selling a couple of these, but I do use quite a few of the cameras that I mentioned, so I'm pretty happy with what I've bought. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye now.